my godmother, Alicia Torres Garcia. She was born March 23rd, 1938, in Las Vegas, New Mexico. I rang the doorbell. I was really nervous because Alicia and I never really spend time alone. When she opened the door, she had a smile on her face and welcomed me in. Right away, she jumped in showing me pictures and telling stories. The look in her eyes came back to life. She opened up so easily, and the knot in my stomach began to disappear. I've never seen the sight of her. So Alicia, tell me your story. Open up to me about growing up in New Mexico. I want to hear about La Resolana in your village, your family and community working together, staying connected. Her paternal grandparents, Juan Garcia E. Gonzalez, born June 10, 1871, in Puerto de Luna, New Mexico, and Alicia Martinez, born June 17, 1877, in San Agustin, New Mexico. During her childhood, she lived in Las Vegas, New Mexico for nine months of the year with her paternal grandparents, and then for three months in El Cerrito, New Mexico with her maternal grandparents. Lucio Torres, born October 22, 1893, in Roswell, New Mexico, and Isabel Duran, born December 9, 1891, in El Pueblo, New Mexico. She would tell me stories about her grandfather, Juan, and that he was a teacher for many years in different communities in New Mexico. He was a teacher in El Cerrito, New Mexico, in 1902 to 1903. That year, he was Isabel Duran Torres' teacher, her maternal grandmother. She was only 11 years old. She loved telling me the story because she thought it was so ironic. She stood up and walked over to the stove and put on some green chili stew. I loved her green chili stew, but never really thought about the way she made it. She laughed while she stirred the stew. Why are you laughing? I asked her. She turned towards me with an expression I will never forget. So many memories are coming back to me. The first time I made green chili stew with my grandmother in El Cerrito. She yelled at me so much because I kept messing up. I still use her recipe today, she told me. I saw her wrinkles slowly disappear with her smile. I could see her inner child coming back to play. She poured me a bowl and grabbed a hot tortilla off the stove. I never made tortillas. I never learned how to, she told me. She sat back down and I was watching her go through her books and old photographs. I could tell she hasn't looked at them in so long. It touched me to bring these pieces of her back. I felt more comfortable with her. Her voice was calm and sincere. She would smile while telling some stories and others she would get very quiet. Her laugh bounced off the walls and I smiled to her because I've never seen her so happy. Oh Pamela. I need to start writing this stuff down, she told me. She walked into her room and brought out a huge book that looked like early 1900s. My heart was racing, dying to know what was inside. She took out pictures of her house she grew up in in El Cerrito and pointed out the different people and other photographs. She told me something I will always remember. The world has changed so much. I can barely work my TV or computer. I still go farming, cook panocha, and make homemade jellies. I still go to visit El Cerrito I see friends. But let me tell you, I never see La Resolana anymore. All the men I used to see talking passed away or moved. My friends' children moved to bigger cities, got jobs, and education. They don't want to live the way we did, planting crops to survive, and making dinner from the food in your backyard. They rarely stop by to see them. Our family, church, community, and life gone is what makes our roots important. We all have and keep our memories in our mind and heart. We must share them for history to continue in New Mexico. Of course, I miss my grandparents and parents, but to remember is to honor them as life and La Resolana. A lump in my throat forms while trying to hold back tears. I smiled to comfort her and I realized how close I had become with her. I got her memories and emotions written down, something I'm going to cherish forever. She pulled out photos of her mother, 
and father at their wedding. The photograph was so old, I was hesitant to touch it. I've always been interested in history. I always admired old photographs. But being adopted, I never really had family history. My mother and my aunt's family all passed away. I never saw photographs or heard memories about them. They weren't New Mexico natives either, even though I grew up in New Mexico. It's hard growing up with no identity or history of where I come from. Alicia really opened my eyes and helped me be grateful for the family history I do have. It might not be related to her, but she connected me closer to my family.